So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Open Active Adoption Engagement Forum on uh, the first one of 2024, Friday 19th of uh, January. Thank you very much, um, everybody, for joining. Great to see so many uh, people on the call um, and some new faces as well. So that's really, really great. Thank you very much for uh, joining. Um, I'll start with a usual um, reminder that I do at the start of meetings that um, Open Active has a Slack workspace. Um, if you're not familiar with Slack, it's a kind of almost a bit like a, a chat forum or something like that. Um, for, free to register, completely free. Um, uh, you just have to kind of register your name, username and, and password and, and then you'll have access. Um, so please do join up to the Slack workspace if you're not already on there. It's a great place to chat with other people in the Open Active community and keep up to date with all the latest that is going on and um, any updates from the ODI team that is uh, currently stewarding the Open Active Initiative. Um, and you can also find the uh, links to all the previous adoption engagement forum um, meeting recordings and slides and things like that. So yeah, please do join if you haven't already. A uh, quick look at what we've got on the agenda for today. So um, we'll start with a quick round of uh, introductions just um help everyone get to know each other um and then we've got a kind of new project that is um just coming up on the horizon um in open active um so we're going to talk to you about that um so andrew is going to introduce uh, us to that and then um we'll have some time for a bit of a group discussion and hopefully get your thoughts and input which would be um really interesting and really valuable for us and then at the end, um, we'll also have 10 minutes or, or a bit of time for any other business if anyone has any questions or, or anything they want to raise. Um, so that's what we've got on the agenda. Um, as I say, it'd be great to start with a quick round of introductions. Um, I'll start with myself. My name is Tim Corby and I work in the at the Open Data Institute as part of the team which stewards the Open Active uh, Initiative. Um, and I guess it makes sense to carry on with the rest of the ODI team. So I'll go to you, Andrew. Thanks, Tim. Um, so I'm Andrew Newman. I'm the principal data specialist here at the ODI, um, and I'm the program lead for Open Active. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, I look after the team here um, uh, and make sure that Open Active is heading in a, a reasonably good direction from the stewardship point of view. Um, I'll come to Darren next. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Darren Tupper. I'm a consultant here with the ODI. I'm spending a lot of time on the Open Active team in a technical capacity. So my background is more in technical research and programming. So um, I'm one of the uh, couple of in-house people, along with Howard, who's not on the call today, um, that will help out with any tech questions if you have them. Thanks very much. Great. Thanks, Darren. Uh, Jules, can I come to you next? Morning. Yes, I'm Jules from York Sport Foundation. Great. Thanks, Jules. Uh, Emma, I guess makes sense to go to you next. Hi there. Um, so I am literally in my first week. I'm the new insight and impact officer for Be Active, Active Partnership. Brilliant. Thank you, Emma. Sorry, I just realised that there are two Emmas on the call, so <laughs> I didn't realise that. But yeah, thank you great to see you, Emma, and thanks for joining the call. Uh, so yeah, other, other Emma. Emma Gooch. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Emma. I'm the Data and Intent Manager at Yorkshire Sport Foundation. Um, I've just come back from... Uh, maternity well, I'll just come back October came back from maternity leave so uh, it's good to be back great to see you Emma uh Paul hi everyone I'm Paul I am the Marcoms manager for Active Lincolnshire another active partnership and oversee our activity finder through Let's Move Lincolnshire brilliant thanks Paul great to see you uh Susie Hi, Susie O'Shea. I'm at Energize, which is in Shropshire. Nice to see everybody. Great. Thanks, Susie. Uh, Dave Butter. Uh, hi, Dave Butter from North Guard Limited. Uh, we um, aggregate um, with, uh, all sorts of activity data and have built a whole load of technology to gather it and disseminate and publish it. Brilliant. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Grace. Hi, I'm Grace. I work for Somerset Activity and Sports Partnership, and I'm their Open Data Project Officer. Great. Thanks, Grace. Uh, Brad, are you there? Yeah, morning, everyone. Sorry, I can't get my camera to work this morning. Um, but I'm Brad. Um, I lead on uh, the Active Dorset Activity Finder um, and Open Data. Great. Thanks, Brad. Uh, Zach. 
morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Zach. I work for London Sports. I'm the project manager in the digital tech and innovation team at London Sport. Brilliant. Thanks, Zach. And Tom. Hey, everyone. Tom Marley here from Played, and we help make it easier for people to discover opportunities to be active. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Great to see you all here. And uh, thank you very much for that. And um, good to see some new faces. So uh, very much, very welcome uh, to the call. And uh, um, yeah, hope you uh, find today's session valuable. Um, so without further ado, I will pass over to Andrew. Uh, cool. Thanks, Tim. Should we have the next slide? Um, so what I want to do today is introduce a new piece of work that ODI are starting up with a consulting group called Kubrick. Um, and this is quite an interesting proposition for ODI. Um, so I'll set the scene first. Um, and what we'd like to do is use some time in the call today to, to define some requirements, some hypothesis. Uh, and I'll hand over to Darren to do that in a moment. Um, so as, as you know, ODI steward Open Active, and we do that with Sport England funding. Um, just as a bit of context, um, ODI has recently secured another 18 months of funding from Sport England to steward Open Active, uh, taking us through till uh, June 2025. Um, there'll be a formal announcement on that in the next couple of days, but it's it's just useful to know that we we have funding to keep stewarding Open Active for, for, for another 18 months. Um, but actually, the work that I'm going to talk about now isn't being funded out of that that Sport England funding. Um, Cubic Group um, are, are a consulting group. Uh, they have quite a novel model, um, and their model is is a training based model. So, so as an organisation, what they do is they identify high potential candidates. Uh, they train those candidates for four months uh, by getting them to work with industry experts. Uh, they're interested in kind of novel technologies, uh, future technologies, data analytics, um, AI, things like that. So uh, they train these consultants in those areas. Um, and then they deploy them to clients to deliver solutions for clients. And these clients are generally um, big tech companies, you know, Microsoft, Facebook, uh, Google, um, etc., et um, and some of the big uh, consulting houses as well. Um, but there's an opportunity uh, for them to deploy some of their client, their, their consultants into not for profits, and obviously the ODI is a not for profit. Uh, and we've been talking to them about this for a, for a few months now, and we pitched some potential projects to Kubrick Group they might like to make a contribution to. Um, and they've identified Open Active as a project that they'd be really interested in supporting and a project they really think they can add value to. Um, so we've kind of got a bit of a unique opportunity here because we've got an opportunity to collaborate with Kubrick's team. It gives us access to additional consultancy um, and, and that will enable us to explore new problems, to test new hypotheses and to deliver um, new insights. Um, so the proposal is that Kubrick are going to help deliver a, an analytics project for Open Active. So what does that look like? So if we just jump to the next slide, Tim. Um, so at the moment, we are working to start up a project with Kubrick. Um, the plan is that that project will deliver a minimum viable product, um, and that, that minimum viable product will be some sort of analytics product or service for Open Active. Um, it will now allow us to test um, some of the frameworks that the ODI team have been developing for the last 12 months. Um, so we, we've been developing Python and R frameworks to make it easier for people to access and use the Open Active data feeds. Um, but it will also let us answer some of those questions that we've had around Open Active um, that, that, we, that we've that we really been unable to answer for some time. And that those questions might be questions about the um, coverage of Open Active data, uh, the, the demographics of people uh, who are have access to the services that are described in Open Active data, or, or the quality of Open Active data, or, or anything else, actually. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to kind of create a long list of things that we could test with hypo hypothesis, a list of hypotheses we could test with analytics. Um, and we've got some thoughts about that within ODI, obviously, but we'd be really interested in the kind of community's thoughts on that, which is today's session. 
Um, and then we're going to take that, that list to the steering committee and ask them to identify the areas where they think some analytics could have most value. Um, Kubrick will then um, build the MVP to address those prioritised um, hypothesis and um, potentially we if, if if the thing that they build works we could then scale that and, and deploy that as a as a as a an open active service so that's kind of the context for the project i hope that makes sense um are there any questions around that okay excellent so what i will do then um darren temple in our, our team is going to kind of facilitate a a requirements discussion next um and this is your opportunity to really feed into to to this work and to feed in ideas of things that the kubrick analysts could look at uh, using open active data perhaps using third party data um to, to to help us really kind of prove the value of the impact of open active so so darren can i hand over to you at that point um apologies i need to leave the call at 11 um but but darren and tim will complete the call and, and the rest of the meeting with you so so yeah uh, darren are you there Thanks. Yep, I'm here. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so Tim and I are going to kind of uh, tag team the rest of the session from here. So I'm going to kick us off. Um, we've got four kind of areas that we're going to focus on. And um, the, the the nature of the rest of the session is just have a really interactive um, chat, basically, and um, get your ideas as a group, as our community, kind of distilled as much as possible to help direct this Kubrick project. Like you have a, 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 a direct link to to sort of driving this we're not kind of dictating this at all this is very kind of community led so first things first let's go over the technical hurdle and basically i have a miro board set up which our good friend howard set up for us yesterday and howard assures us that this has uh, public access so i've just put the link in the chat um and then tim is going to that now on the screen share as well and so if you would like to look in the chat in the zoom chat You'll find that link there if you could join that uh, and then we'll all be together in virtual space look at this this is the metaverse in action um cool so just so you're aware and um, we had an ideation session yesterday with kubrick we bn myself tim andrew Howard, and a couple of other uh, people on our team and we did this same exact exercise um being led by the uh, our kubic representative so these are the kinds of things that kubrick was interested in this is their process um to to kind of understand the flow the needs of the initiative that they're working with and to just work out you know what's the sort of flavor and shape of of what people want like where are we going um what's what's exactly happening here so we're going to go from left to right um, sort of take this one by one. Even if you're relatively new to Open Active, you don't know much the, uh, about the initiative, you can think of things in more general terms, and then we'll kind of get a little bit more granular and directed to Open Active in itself, and we can help you uh, rephrase those those questions. We're then going to have a look at the board afterwards. We're going to go away after this session, Tim and I and other people internally, and um, basically kind of break it down into themes and areas and look for common patterns and, and various needs and, and add additional notes as to the kind of relative strength of all these different things. And then um, go back to Kubrick, merge the kind of two sets of insights together, both what we have internally from the ODI from yesterday's session and from today's session, looking at the wider community and use that to kind of shape the work going forwards. So hopefully that's relatively clear. And um, I would just like to kind of put it to put it to the group. We'll do this as an open conversation. Sometimes you run a board as a kind of five minutes silent working, putting stickies on your own. And um, but we thought that it would just be a little bit um, more kind of natural to just start talking, and um, we can kind of help each other fill things out. Um, so as we go, either feel free to grab a sticky yourself. That's the sticky note icon on the left hand side. Is the one with the kind of flipped up um black kind of uh corner on, on the right hand side so i believe so on tim's screen you'll see it as a fourth icon down you might have it as a second icon down there is also a text icon that capital t but it doesn't work so well because you can't kind of scale it appropriately so please use the sticky icon instead so as we go you can uh, feel free to, to capture a thought stick it on a sticky whack it down um, or just start talking and, and someone else in, in the group can kind of uh, try and capture it. So Tim and I will be taking notes as we go. 
So if anyone would like to kind of start us off, um, what defines success for Open Active for you? Like, what do you want to get out of, of the initiative? What do you imagine the initiative is or was before you even um, kind of uh, joined it and, and started to, to understand a little bit more about it in detail? So we have someone visiting. Uh, I'm going to call you out on this one. So easy upload method for uploading activities by non-technical volunteers. That's a great one. So uh, who put that one down? Would you mind uh, sort of explaining your thoughts on that one or expanding on it? Uh, who's mentioned our first sticky there? Easy upload methods. It was me. Me, Jules. Hi, Jules. Hi. So is this like the first thing that comes to mind or this is naturally like your top priority? Well, the, the success is obviously a system that's just has got all the activities people can go to. So if someone else could put that. I was yeah. putting that as just a kind of how it's going to work that anyone can learn how to do it in seconds without it being a, a long drawn out process. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I fully agree with you in that. In fact, the very first word there, easy, it just encapsulates that that all. You could even just have like one sticky on its own, which is just the word easy. I was We was having a conversation with someone else last week and... Um, I, I asked them, this was regarding data ingestion in sports facility stuff overall. Uh, and I said, out of content quality and ease of use, uh, what would you, your top priority be? And uh, he thought about it for a minute and he was like, yeah, it's just definitely easy. You know, you can have something which has all the content, all the quality and amazing system, but if it's not simple and easy for people to use, it's not going to fly. It's not going to go for it. Cool. Thanks very much. Um, right. We see a bunch of other uh stickies flying up here so i'm going to go to one of a slightly different flavor so someone has mentioned this one right in the middle more people active so that's great so that's uh, the, the kind of idea of the initiative that's le moving less from the kind of nuts and bolts side to the impact of the project so regardless of what you're doing if it's a technical project or a non-technical project the final output is that more people are active so um who put that one down would you mind expanding on that one a little bit more people active uh, yeah, that was me, actually. Um, and I wrote it and then I've stuck another sticky note just right next to it to try and oh, explain yeah. it a little bit in a little bit more detail. But I was still typing that. The, the small cool. print. <laughs> yeah, the small print. Um, so basically, I guess, just having all activities available so that anybody can find um, whatever activity they're, they're looking for. Um, in one place and that that's the the ideal that would be success you know we we talk a lot about people in communities being able to go onto their local community center or library's website and there be an activity finder on there that they can find an activity whether it's sport whether they were particularly looking for sport or physical activity but they find one um and then they're able to kind of do that and they're i guess accidentally active um yeah, yeah. and then become active and it changes you know their health and, and well-being yeah um, and that's yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's like providing those gateways, isn't it? Just easy mm -hmm. part to entry. And I think especially because um, we do naturally have a more kind of technical slant on this. Open Active is a, a technically based um, uh, project at, at the end of the day, is that everyone these days has an awareness of what good and especially what bad technology looks like. You know, we've all, uh, many of us have, have phones or at least interact with the Internet in some way. And, uh, you know, it's just so refreshing and nice when you find a good app or a good website and you can just find what you want in a couple of clicks. Boom, boom, boom. You hardly even think about it. What you often notice is the bad ones where you have to trawl through and actually get somewhere. And it's really nice when you have those services, the public services and even those um, directed by government. Sometimes it doesn't always work. They just work really well. So I had a really uh, good personal example was um, I need a new passport a couple of years ago. And I actually found that the government pass pa passport application process was surprisingly easy. I got to the end of it and this very clear website. And I was just like, is that it? Like, I didn't feel like it was really done, but it's really refreshing when you have that nice user journey and you get what you want. You get to the end, your goal here, more people active. So yeah, that's great, Emma. Thanks very much. I'm going to pick out another couple and then we'll move on um, to the next section, just in the interest of time. Uh, there's lots of activity. This is really good. So what else do we have here? Something of a slightly different flavor. So one place for all activity uh, providers and users to go to. Yep. Just kind of simplifying it again, having activities for everyone tackling inequalities. Absolutely. I'm going to pick up on this one. So having activities for everyone tackling inequalities. Um, who put this one down? Would you like to expand on it a little bit? Yeah, that was me. Um, 
I think it's something we've seen quite a lot. So it's we've got all different sort of playways type providers have different ways of having filters. Um, but actually having an un, like clear data sets that are right, well, if you tick disability, that's what you're going to see when you get it. Um, right. whereas the data for that varies massively as to whether that's just someone that says, I might accept someone, or is it a session specifically for someone with learning difficulties? Yeah. Um, so I think just having a clearer process for where someone would go and also having somewhere that actually shows a good volume of content for people who are suffering the greatest barriers against yeah them. yeah absolutely and I, I think for those people that are putting sessions of various natures on what makes it easier for them as well is having things in the most kind of standardized format as possible something which is both standardized and intuitive um, and that's certainly a focus um, that we're going to be pushing for on our side of things over the next year. It's been an ongoing conversation um, over the last few months as to the, the European access standard is quite flexible. Um, but sometimes uh, with certain aspects such as the um, uh, inequalities and, and disability and accessibility information, it can be a little bit too flexible because people don't quite know how to fill it out. Um, there's a field called amenity feature that people can um, uh, mark up their activities and their locations with, and they can fill that out with any kind of free text. That's all very well and good, but by not predefining it in kind of standard fashion means that both um, the writers and the readers of, of those things don't know exactly what to expect. So we're going to help um, to try and lock that down as best as possible for the benefit of everyone. OK, that's great. I'm going to move on to the uh, next one. Feel free to keep um, filling out uh, things there as you, you think to them. You know, you can jump around this board a little bit. But in terms of the structure of the conversation, um, we're just going to move on to the next bit now. So now we've kind of got those uh, creative juices flowing and the, the ideas of what success looks like. Um, we can now. Uh, have because we do have an initiative which has, has been running has got some momentum already ask some questions about what it looks like now and then where it could be going and where it has come from so thinking about this from a more analytical lens this is uh, at the end of the day going to be an analysis conversation uh, that we're having with uh, uh, Kubrick who, who are I should say very very motivated to, to try and help us drill into the initiative and uh get some good insights that we can take some, some actions forward on this. What are the kinds of questions that we can now ask about the initiative based on what success looks like? What does good look like? What does bad look like? Are we doing good, badly uh, in various areas and so on? Or a hypothesis e even, you know, a kind of, is this the case? Yes or no? Uh, and then we can kind of uh, say, well, if this is the, the case, then such and such. If this is not the case, then such and such, and make it a little bit more conditional from there. So again, these kind of questions and hypo hypotheses, if anyone has any ideas, then uh, whack them down and we'll do the same kind of exercise. So I'll pick on a couple and we'll uh, expand the conversation a little bit as much as we can. Uh, as we're going, I'm going to just scoot around the rest of the board looking at the success stickies because they were already filling out. And I'm just going to uh, get a high level overview of what everyone was thinking about. So uh, this is a, a bit of time for some of that elevator music but uh, I'll just give you a few seconds to, to fill out some more stickies in the next section. So making it easier for booking systems to become open, active, enabled. Yep, that's looking more on the booking side. That's great. Everything is listed, not just booking systems, everything, the master set. Creating a set of data standards that meets the needs of users. Yeah, both data users and end users. You know, there's a whole kind of spectrum of users at the end of the day. Organizations, sessions, places. Yep, dates, times, making sure everything is encapsulated. Big one at the bottom right here, joined up plan. So all active partnerships and other organizations can follow one process. So we are not all trying to develop very similar platforms in every area. Yeah, I really like that. I mean, that's the whole point of the standard, right? You don't have uh, a thousand different types of screw or a thousand different types of, of bolt and so on. Um, you try and minimize that to, to the absolute ones necessary so that you can all kind of standardize. And uh, regarding standardization, I, I think that this is an issue in, in absolutely every area. I heard, uh, I used to work in science research, and I've heard that even working transatlantically, there was issues with making satellites in terms of uh, working with millimeters on 
on uh, on the European side and inches on on the uh, on the American side, and it really kind of screws things up. So if you just kind of standardize things from the, the beginning, like we're using millimeters, and these are the kind of screws that we're going to use, then it just makes it much easier for everyone. Okay, so I'm now going to start reading out some of the questions sections that we got. Um, what do we have here? Start at the top left again. Someone's claimed that prime patch with understanding where we stand on social and semi-physical activities. Ooh, that's a good one for expansion. So who put that one down? Would you mind um, breaking that one down a bit for the rest of the group? Why is it always me? Why is it you, always me? You, you picked questions? it. You grabbed it. Well, <laughs> I should have told by the color. It's that lovely lime green. Corporate. Corporate green. Thank you. <laughs> uh, because we'll have a photography day from a walking group. But would we necessarily have a walking day from a photography group? It's 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 that bit of my joke is we wouldn't necessarily put singing up there, but mm. singing is a gateway drug to dancing, dancing because yeah. singing would be based in a theatre and theatre have dancing groups. Yeah, and so it's that way of understanding where our boundaries are. What do we say? Actually, no, we're not really interested in knitting. But yeah, but as Emma says, the accidentally active. This is maybe the the audience we can play with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of getting a bit uh, sort of philosophical here, like what is an activity and so on. And you can look at some uh, sporting like Olympic activities such as, I don't know, uh, shooting, archery, something like that. Exactly. And you're not really moving so much. In fact, many of these things are, are best done when your heart rate is very low and very, when you're very calm and you, you can sort of aim well. So you know, but there's an aspect of competition and just being outside and engaging with other people in, in that kind of environment. And then um, again, this is uh, as well as the accessibility question, another question that often comes up in our internal conversations, exactly what kind of content should open active be um, supporting? Does it uh, make sense to kind of ingest and cater for as as many things as possible, really go broad? Or does that start to muddy the waters and just confuse things? And is it best to actually just stay kind of within a more focused, narrow area? And this is an ongoing conversation um, that we have around things associated with open referral and what does open referral do and so on. Jules, you have your hand up. Uh, a lot of our local uh, districts will have their own finders uh, for activities and for organizations social prescribers use them a lot yeah. so it's it's actually that's where they go well we actually want to know where the the the, the coffee mornings are as well as the nature walks and it's right. there if they're doing that they'll need way that we can maybe bring data in that they recognize it when we go actually no you can't do that we need but yeah sorry that sentence ended badly <laughs> it's okay it started good we'll forget it we'll cut we'll edit that out in, the, in, the, in, in the post we'll take it out of post take it out of post fix it in the mix um, i'm, I'm going to jump to another one so i can't eat i can't eat all this this big pink one right in the middle here so what are the user journeys that are most important to optimize user journeys and optimization that's great okay who put this one down would you like to discuss it a little bit further oh uh, yeah that was me um so yeah try i was trying to ask it, uh, write the question in a way that made sense. I uh, had to rewrite it a few times. Um, but basically, I think um, from my perspective, it's always important to focus on like the end participant or whatever definition we want to give for the person taking part in the activity itself mm -hmm. uh, and kind of try and paint a better picture of who they are and what we're trying to achieve and work backwards from that. So it's about... Is it this inactive people, which personally I think is is kind of a priority audience to think about and then understand currently where their challenges are around finding or, or taking part in physical activity and then just making sure experiences are built around that journey. Because I think what tends to happen is that all sport and physical activity gets bucketed in and not all of it is appropriate for people that are just starting their journey so club slash um regular play kind of gets bucketed in with friendly be beginner friendly activity and yeah i think that's the bit where it's just a bit if you have a clear user journey to 
and that's defined, then you can kind of have a, a better view of, of how to deliver that user journey. Yeah, absolutely. And um, this comes back to a conversation that we were having yesterday when we were talking with Kubrick directly. And I thought that there are people that are more naturally attracted to sort of the, the, the kind of classic big six, as they're called, I think, like uh, it's uh, football, swimming, um, like rugby, tennis, those kind of things. And then other people that might be more in, interested in uh, sort of yoga sessions and things which are more typically taught by in smaller groups with um, like a class lead, uh, the sort of time scales and, and requirements are very, very different. So are we matching up these um, activity seekers with the activity providers and ensuring that these providers can use the system as best as possible? Are they engaging with it as opposed to the kind of big leisure centers with different budgets, different tech um, abilities that can sort of cater for a different, uh, maybe a slightly different target audience? Um, who can, but then are seeking a sort of subgroup of the overall set of, of activities that, that people might be looking for. So something of that nature. Um, yeah. yeah, really good question. And I think just just to go into that a little bit deeper, just it's just even understanding is it the for parent looking for activities for their children? Is it someone looking for activities for their parents? Is it someone looking to start? getting active etc there's quite a lot of nuance between that and i think that's super important to just like really highlight yeah for sure um and again that comes back to sort of jules's point of um the nature of the activities and the content that that, that we're, we're putting in uh what def what defines sort of active or defines what should be in open active and then you have things which are not stereotypically physical active but regarded but traditionally regarded as an activity such as shooting on archery and then you have things which are not stereotypically active but still have a sports label now i'm thinking of the things such as like esports that i mean this is a big field these days and it's something which a lot of people are engaging with and a lot of people have as their main kind of like pastime um so and it gets people sort of interacting with other people and doing various things should we be catering for uh, th this kind of audience within the system and um, these are still open questions naturally we're in the kind of question section of this board cool i'm going to pick up uh, just one more ticket and then i'll uh, open up for kind of general comments as well in fact i'll take Sorry, some Darren, there's just a, so, a couple, couple of people with hands up so maybe exactly yeah so continue. i'll take the hands and then i'll um i'll, I'll pick when the extra stickies susie you have a hand up morning Hi, oh, yeah, it was just, um, I think uh, Tom's point about user journeys, that's probably the key thing, but recognising that there are, as he was illustrating a couple of examples, so many different users. Mm -hmm. So it's not defining, um, you know, which one there's going to be, it's going to be all of the examples he gave and more, you know, it could be a parent, it could be, a, you know, whatever scenario. But I think to the point about the whole discussion about which activities and is something physical activity or isn't it, um, speaking from on behalf of the active partnerships, you know, our, our work is all about, obviously, it's all about tackling inequalities and that's the goal. But whether somebody, whether something we deem it active or it isn't active, um, somebody has to get there. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that has to be considered as well. So whether the thing at the end of this is knitting, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody has to get to that knitting group and for many you know for the people that we're trying to work with and encourage to to eliminate you know inactivity mm. and um and tackle inequalities that is that is a success story mm. um and what can lead on from that so it's just linking on from what jules was saying and adding to that really and tom's point about user journeys but trying to narrow this down doesn't help um, with what we're trying to achieve um, and at the end of the day if somebody wants to find football they will absolutely find football they don't need any of us to be having these discussions mm -hmm. those are not the people we're trying to we don't we don't need to help in, in these solutions so yep so that's not only uh, user journeys in the sort of metaphorical sense but also in the physical sense yeah absolutely <laughs> Literally it's, just recognizing, it's just recognizing that we need what we need and we've been having these discussions um for a long time um because we're into quite a few years now and we're still not there we need something to help us do the work we're doing yeah. um 
and and that work is to get to people who wouldn't even be considering looking on anything to find something you know so it, it's mm -hmm. not about making it easier for people who already know mm -hmm. that they want to find sport in their local area because there is no issue if i know i want to find a particular sport in my local area it isn't difficult yeah it's not just people we're trying to get to yeah absolutely it's moving into the kind of rumsfeldian language of like the unknown unknowns um how do you uh just surface information um almost serendipitously for those who uh, are not necessarily immediately seeking it absolutely great point susie thanks and um, paul you've patiently got your hand up yeah no, it's kind of feeding into that as well i'll put my hand down whilst i talk um i think there's yeah there's a huge amount of stuff out there that proves and shows the value of the atypical activities so i think it would be really valuable again active partnership end to have a way to represent those in an activity finder as an end result. Um, I think as part of that, though, we do need to be able to have a way to group them together or talk about the benefits. And I think that's something that we find is missing is mm -hmm. when we look at a long COVID project or any other or MSK project is, well, actually, what is the benefit of this physical activity? And I think right. users need prompting when they're putting that in. So yeah. I was wondering whether actually, as much as I don't want to complicate the framework, mm -hmm. um, whether something where you can say, right, this is good for your heart rate, this is fine motor skills, this uh -huh. is kind of a strength, conditioning, balance, and to be yeah. able to select. And actually then when you're doing knitting, at least you can tell people the type of activity they're able to get involved with yeah. versus just trying to clump them all together as sports. Yeah. And then you can kind of seek those out into a campaign separately and begin to kind of create something that's tailored for your end user to deliver yeah. activities that are relevant. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. Um, that's a, a novel look on it. I, I hadn't considered that before. I'm always thinking um, it just made me imagine, you know, you buy like a pack of cereal or something these days and it's got in the bottom right hand side, like protein, fats, carbohydrates, la, 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 almost kind of breaking it down in such a way like motor skills, um, you know, heart, heart. Uh, conditioning and, and so on something like that so drilling down to it on that kind of other level not just what it is but what you're kind of getting from it that's really interesting Paul yeah thanks um Tom you've got your hand up as well sorry um I feel, feel like I've been hogging the floor a little bit but it just came to mind as that was um being discussed is that I think it's important to just zoom out a little bit and I think this is quite framed around activity finders and what's already kind of available but I think zooming out to look at like okay what's the def what's we're really trying to connect supply and demand here supply of sport and physical activity with demand for it um and i think just having a bit of a clear um mapping or or view of what the supply looks like and what the definition of the supply of sport and physical activity is um okay. and whether it branches into things like knitting or any type of event and then actually what the who's looking for these things and then the applications that sit in the middle can be built by people who can build the applications but i think that having a bit of a clearer view of what is the definition of supply what's the definition of demand and then yeah. like how we match those is is a secondary question yeah great point um have you captured that in one of these stickers here how would you put that in your own words uh if not, feel free to add some text and it'll help us uh, use it after the session. Cool. Uh, in the interest of time, because we're coming up to quarter past 11, I'm going to hand over to Tim now, who will usher us, on, uh, uh, usher us along very politely to the um, last two sections of the board. We've got some really good points so far. And now we want to kind of look at some of the kind of potential outputs that people would be interested in seeing from this Kubrick project. So Tim, over to you. Thanks, Darren. Uh, I feel a bit under pressure because Darren's been doing such a great job uh, facilitating the discussion so far. So hopefully it won't all fall apart now I'm in charge. But um, yeah, so just moving on to the next column. Um, and as it sort of says at, at the top, are there any, the question kind of is, are there any specific um, analytics or data visualizations that you think would be useful um, and help you in, in your work or, or help to demonstrate the impact of Open Active? So that could be looking at open active data specifically. That could be um, uh, digging into to that data and creating some sort of insights or, or visualizations that display how um, that data uh, comes across. Um, or it could be comparing open active with other data sets or, or um, you know, 
other data that um, helps to demonstrate where maybe where the gaps are in open active where open active is strong um anything like that so um tom you've got your hand up uh, come straight to you oh was that a kind of legacy hand from <laughs> when you were sorry yeah i never put it down my bad okay no problem so yeah, I'll just give you a, a couple of seconds, as, as Darren did, just to start start putting some um, some thoughts down. But yeah, so it's been some um, brilliant insights so far um, in the discussion and some really interesting points that people made. And I think um, the one thought uh, that's occurring occurred to me um, in the last point that was made is that there, there really needs to be that balance struck between what uh, data and how the data is uh, represented and is useful for the, the actual user uh, or the person uh, using the platform at the end who, who wants to be active and then how the data is actually useful for people who, who want to build the platforms and, and use the data. So tagging a, a session as useful or, or um, appropriate for someone with a particular impairment, for example, might not necessarily be useful for an end user, but it is useful for being able to filter that data and create tags and and build a a platform that that uses that you know that is aimed at a specific user or has that specific data. So, so I see a, a couple of thoughts being put down. So, um, I can see how much grassroots um, generated rather than booking system provider exported where is this working and where is that not so that, i think that's a that's a really interesting point so that's sort of where the data is being um published and, and being generated from that who was it who um who put that one down uh, uh, that was me and um uh, um with the um I, I um have a feeling um i think i'm right that there, there is so, so much small activity out there that is absolutely pertinent to open active that isn't in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And by this, I mean the local yoga instructor, the, um, the, the small swimming group, the wild swimmers that I swim with every week um, on the beach down here. I feel that, that that is a very small percentage of the data that is in the system. But the value of those activities is actually somewhat higher than a squash session which is great because there was a point made earlier, someone said, um, anyone who wants to play football knows where to find football. And I totally agree with this. But people don't know that there's a swimming group in their area that go to a lake every week or a yoga teacher who may help them out. Um, and I'd really like to see analytics. I, I think I know what the answer will be, but I'd like to see analytics that would go further, that kind of try and answer the question is what can we do to get that stuff in there? Yeah, that's really interesting. And and I suppose that would be there's analytics or potential analytics there as how much of that data is sort of available in a digital context, but not open active context, and how much data is just you know, whether how much is just a gap that there there isn't data that exists at all in terms of a kind of digital context. That's really interesting. Thanks, Dave. A um, couple of others going on there. Uh, someone's put heat maps of inventory and searches and ability to compare. Did the uh, person who put that down just want to expand on that a little bit, please? Yeah, you get to hear my voice again. Great. Um, I kind of, it's similar to a thing I put in the other, in the hypothesis and questions as well. I think there's, in terms of our data and insight, being able to actually look at an area and know that, right, we've got loads of searches in this area, but we've got no inventory and vice versa, and begin to support workforce and providers to either create opportunities that are missing or know that there's actually opportunities that are underutilized and be able to kind of look at place-based working that is coming from Sport England anyway and having a tool to allow us to do that at a very local level. No, that's really interesting. Thank you, Paul. And uh, um, is that something that um, other other people agree with, that other people would see uh, see value in their areas as well? Yeah, I get big thumbs up from Susie. So yeah, I think you, you might be on something there, Paul. Brilliant, thank you. Um, also see uh, demographics for different activity types or other data filters, um, for example, a uh, day of the week. Me again. Brilliant, um, thanks Paul. It kind of taps into a similar thing that actually, if we're looking at tackling inequalities um, or we're looking at a specific kind of, if we're gonna take football as an example and to begin to understand who that's providing for, um, where they're coming from, what they're doing, and then, 
the same kind of thing when we look at right can we look at what's out there on a wednesday and who is our wednesday audience who's using that versus who our weekend audience is and the age demographics and the rest of it you know, beginning to understand what's been provided for who and where okay thanks paul so i guess yeah i guess those are kind of more um insights about the the users of the the platforms that the people doing the actual searches um yeah but then there is also that from the activities on there so if you know that an activity has been listed for not for 16 year olds then you've got some of that data within the system already without looking at the searches and we've kind of been able to look at how many sessions are on there provided for women only what's on there that is for mixed gender what is on there for older adults so yeah some of it could come from searches and search solutions um, but other stuff I think probably can come from open active to show what's open to everyone and what's actually targeted to an audience. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. I think that's really interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so I guess just in the, in the interest of time, I'll just maybe um, try and uh, move people on to the final column or question, but um, a couple of really interesting things that I'll maybe come come back to just while, while um, people are, are thinking about that last one. Um, and so the, the last question is just around what data or if there's any data sources that, that people think of or know of or that use or that think would be useful to um, to do those previous columns, to, to do that analytics, to, do, to create those visualizations. Are there any specific um, data sources outside of Open Active that it'd be useful to compare Open Active data with, or to combine Open Active data with to to create insights or or analytics? Are there any uh, data sources that you know any of you use in your day to day work or in your organisations that you think um, would would be useful to to um, help uh, Kubrick in in this work and in, in in creating this analytics and in creating these insights? Um, and just as uh, as people are doing that, I'll just maybe look at a couple of other comments that were going down in that previous um, previous column. So someone's put being able to map activities and providers alongside demographic health and inequality data, e.g. on national shape mapping platform, which is extremely powerful and useful. I think that's a that's a really interesting point. I don't know if whoever um, wrote that one just wants to expand on that one a little bit me i was just i was just trying to get you a link i don't Brilliant. know if anybody Excuse else you. on the call uses shape at all uh, okay we haven't got time for me to share my screen and go into it it's a national um it's a national mapping platform of so i've got, I've got it up on my other screen now um health demographic data census data and everything but all on a all on a map i've got all our projects i've added on because i've got a partnership with one of the nhs uh, organizations locally that's using this um i think it's i think it was primarily developed for the nhs but it's open to anybody to access and whatever um yeah, it's extremely powerful but if we can look, you know, if we were able to look at all our health and demographic data on the map, which I'm looking at in front of me now, I've got, um, but also see where all the providers were and all this was. So these things, these, um, there you go. That's the link. Somebody's Excellent. got there first. Brilliant. Thanks. Yeah, there's just things going on nationally. And it's just like we don't have to create everything from, you know, it's just trying to link these things up. Brilliant. Thanks, Susie. That's really interesting. And yeah, I think that'd be really um, interesting sort of new use of open active data rather than it just being in an activity finder for end users to find activities. Could that data be used um, alongside other demographic data to be able to create insights and to be able to target uh, interventions and resources and things like that? So, yeah, that could be a really interesting uh, new use for and understand where your gaps are it's just yeah. yeah yeah definitely both for uh, local strategic partners and, and uh, national strategic partners as well i'm guessing brilliant so um yeah we're just coming up to the last kind of five minutes and and there was um a, a couple of updates um we wanted to give in any other business so i'll maybe just draw um this session to a bit of a close there and unless um i'll just open it up in case anyone has any 
last uh, questions or points or or anything they would like to say um just to wrap wrap up nope okay brilliant darren was there anything you wanted to just close off with or um I think this has been a really productive session. Um, really proud of the group for getting like so many um, stickies on here and and really good comments. Like I said, we will spend some time afterwards analyzing it. We'll go back through the recording and, and try and capture some of your other thoughts and then go back to Kubrick and weave these all together. Um, someone asked in the chat, unfortunately it was Emma who's left, but just so uh, everyone else is aware and, and for the re um, relevance of the recording, uh, we're looking to work over a period of, I think it's at least 12 weeks with Kubrick. So it could be quite a significant piece of work. Um, this is not just one of their, their analysts, but it's, it's going to be a small team of people um, that's going to be spending uh, at least part of their, their time day to day on this. They're, they're really keen to, to, to get going. So it could be really quite significant and provide some really good momentum. It's good that we're doing this at the start of the year because it could seed something for the rest of 2024. Um, so it's a really been a really nice AEF to to start the year with, and um, we'll continue to report back as the year goes and and as the the um, as the package of work continues and starts with Kubrick and then the follow on from that. So thank you very much, everyone. It's been absolutely fantastic today. Uh, Jules, I'll come to you. I think Emma was asking when does it start. Oh, you're going quite now. Yeah. So what are the times goes? Uh, when's it going to start? Pretty much now. Uh, we're just um, dotting some I's and crossing some T's in, in terms of like the um, technical relationship between the organizations, ODI, Kubrick, Open Active and so on. And then they're, they're at the gates. They're ready to go. They're itching. Thanks. Brilliant. Thanks, Darren. And yeah, I'll just echo what Darren said. Thank you very much for for everyone's engagement and input into, into that. Um, those kind of group discussions, group sessions only only um work if if everybody gets involved and and um add some add some insight. So yeah, really appreciate um everyone's thoughts and insights and input. We think it's been a really valuable session and you you've given us lots of uh, food for thought to take away. So thank you very much everyone. Um so just yeah finishing with some any other business we just wanted to update you on some of our plans for the adoption engagement forum uh, moving on as we as we move into the new year um and basically uh our plan is that we want to try and align the two community groups and, and, and make it a bit more consistent between the two groups so we have the w3c community group uh, and we have the aef currently the w3c community group meets on wednesdays uh once a month and the AEF meets fortnightly on a Friday morning. Um, so they're a bit sporadic, they're not very consistent, and um, it, we feel like that's probably a bit confusing for everyone and, and not the easiest for people to keep track of what's going on or, and when um, meetings are being held and, and all of that sort of stuff. So what we are sort of um, planning is that we will um, align the two meetings. So the AEF will become a monthly meeting, um, and that will move to uh, a new Wednesday slot, which will align with the W3C. So, so basically, there'll be fortnightly meetings which will rotate between the AEF and the W3C at the same time slot on Wednesday. So everyone um, can keep track of it really easily and know exactly what's going on. Um, so, you know, it'll be AEF, then two weeks later, W3C, then two weeks later, AEF, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, we will try and keep the same or similar sort of format for the AEF meetings as to, to how we've been having them. So there will be uh, a mix of presentations, a kind of show, show and tells where people talk about some of the projects they're working on and things that, that they're doing. Um, and also some op opportunities to have meetings a bit more like today where there's a kind of open discussion and, and open forums. Um, and just a kind of reminder that these meetings are for the community, they're for all of you. Um, and so please do uh, consider um, presenting if there's any particular projects or topics that you're interested in or um, are working on. Um, it'd be, yeah, really great to have a really um, mixed bag of agendas. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, please do contribute to that. And if you've got anything in particular that you'd like to talk about or would like to contribute to, then, then please do let us know. Um, and the final change is that we're hoping to 
um, instigate or, or stimulate a bit more discussion online in between meetings, um, partly to, to keep the discussions going um, and also partly to, to help people who maybe aren't able to attend every meeting or, or have caught up with the recording to make sure that they're included and, and have opportunities to be involved in, dis in the discussion. So we're hoping to use those online open active forums on Slack and GitHub and things like that to, to really stimulate that uh, discussion moving forward. Um, so that's the kind of plan. I see Jules has his hand up, so I'll come to Jules. You were literally saying what I was thinking that uh, could we have uh, maybe a, a summary of just like some bullet points of what's gone on in this one. We can post it on the Active Partnership Hub so everyone will see what's going on and then we'll give them the links to the video and then the uh, Slack. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to do that. That's no problem at all. Um, so, yeah, more than happy to do that. Thanks, Jules. Um, we're just hitting to time, but yeah, if there's any last uh, comments or questions that anyone has, then please uh, raise your hand now. Otherwise, I will say, uh, Susie, was that a raising a hand or was that a waving goodbye? Thumbs up. Brilliant. Okay. In which case, I'll bring the meeting to a close. Um, I once again say thank you very much, everyone, for joining, uh, especially those who are new to the group. Thank you. I uh, really appreciate you joining and, and I hope you found the session valuable um, and I hope to see you uh, again next time. So take care, everyone, and thanks very much. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Thank weekend. You. Have a good weekend.